Hello and welcome to Painting Plum Blossoms in the Xie Yi or Freehand Style. As we talked about Chinese painting before, we said that the plum blossom is a common subject of Chinese painting. First, we're going to take a look at the blossom itself close up, and then we'll look at how to put them together onto the tree. But first, let's have a little talk about brushes. There's good and bad brushes for this project. So to start off, a good brush will look like this. A round brush with a fine tip. It's nice and pointy and the sides of the brush tip are straight. That's perfect. This one's pretty good too. It's all right. So what makes a bad brush? Well, this one is not round, it's flat. And if you look at it, it's got glue on it. Somebody used this brush to glue something. That's terrible. All right, next we have this brush is round, but it's not pointy. The tip is no good, so we can't get those fine lines. And this one, well, it might be good for some other project, but just not this one. So those are not good examples. Make sure you get you one that is round and pointed. Next, for paper, if you can get rice paper, that would be awesome. This is not the kind you eat. This kind is made from uh, the part of the plant that you don't eat, the rice stalks, and it's translucent. Uh, that means you can see through it a little bit uh, and it's nice for this kind of activity but if you don't have that you can always use watercolor paper that's perfect for this and you're going to need some scrap paper to test your colors on and of course you're also going to need your ink or your watercolor set some water and a paint tray so go ahead and collect your materials pause the video until you're ready and then meet me back here did you get all your stuff i hope so Let's look at the plum blossom first. So the plum blossom is made by putting five circles close together with a little bit of space in the middle. And in the middle, I'm gonna put one more circle. At the middle, that's gonna be my smallest circle. And then around that, I've got two slightly bigger ones, but you're not actually gonna see those circles. You're just gonna see these dots that I'm making on the outer circle and the inner circle. My inner circle dots are in between my outer ones so that when I draw the little stems on them to the middle they don't cross each other. So if that seems like a lot you can stop and rewind it but basically you just need to make five colorful circles. Rinse out your brush and then come back and make your black circle in the middle and then Color your dot in and draw the line that connects it to that middle circle. Now, my first ones don't look too good. They look kind of like Cheetos, but my last several, they look like nails, and that's what we want it to look like, more like a nail. And when we make our branches, we're gonna use a knobby kind of Cheeto type texture, bumpy, rough looking bark. So let's get started on the tree, the plum tree. First, I'm gonna dip my brush in the water, get myself some uh, black paint on there. And I'm gonna start making my tree kind of free form. I'm gonna start with the trunk and then move out to the branches. The branches can be really twisty and knobby. That gives it a little more character. I'm gonna leave some gaps or empty spaces in between some of my branches because I'm going to put flowers there later, so I want to leave some empty spaces for my, my blossoms. Add some texture while I go. When I add branches, I try to add long, medium, and short branches just to make sure I have plenty of variety in my tree here. There's a short, a long, a medium. Now those branches can get more knobby later. If I uh, come back and add those details, I just want to get the basic lines of my picture figured out here.
take your time. When you're ready, rinse out your brush, switch to red or pink, as the case may be, and start making your blossoms with the five circles. For now, we're just gonna make our blossoms and our buds. So I put a few that are not five circles on the end of the uh, branches, because those are flowers that have not bloomed yet. They're still closed up. Some of them are sideways. Here's one that's looking right at us. So we can see all five petals. Some might be on an angle. Filling a pretty big gap here, so I got I need a pretty big blossom. There we go. There's another one on the other side. It's kind of sideways. Try to keep it to just five petals. My flower is going to go off the page a little bit. I want to give the impression that there's more of this tree that you just can't see. It's just out of the frame. Speed up a little bit here. So when you're ready to switch back to black and add your small detail, don't forget to rinse your brush. Go in and add your tiny details with the tip of your pointy brush. If they're smaller details, use a small, the smallest brush you have, you know. Small details, small brush. There we go. I start by adding the circle in the middle, and then I add the dots and lines. Last but not least, I'm gonna write the words Mei Hua on my picture because part of traditional Chinese painting is that quite often there are some written words on the page too. So I decided it'd be pretty easy to just write the characters for Mei Hua. That's the kind of flower this is. And take your time with this. If you're not used to writing in Chinese characters, you might want to try this with a marker instead of the brush because it can be pretty difficult. Hopefully you end up with something like that. And then the last part is our name stamp. Most of these type of paintings are stamped with the artist's name in red ink and it comes on a rectangle shaped stamp. But if you don't have a stamp with your name, we're just gonna make it with a marker here. Make a rectangle. Uh, with three sides, then I write my name on the inside, and then I close up my rectangle last, just to make sure my letters will all fit in there. All right, well, I hope you ended up with something you're proud of, and I can't wait to see what you make. Bye for now.